I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and welcome to the recap of the May 2022 Chemnitz Dialong livestream. I actually have not dyed the yarn for the stream yet. I'm about to start streaming in about 45 minutes, but I wanted to show you the collection of dye stocks that I pulled for this dialong because some of these are nearly empty and it's time to use them up. All right, I'm getting a little corny because this month, or by the time you're watching this, last month's inspiration photo was of these old alarm clocks where we had a lot of neutral tones with some pops of copper and like an oxidized copper kind of green. This is very different from a clock inspiration photo I did multiple years ago, which had a lot of red in it. And the yarn from that clock was one of my favorites ever. I don't think I'm going to be creating as much of a collection as I had done that last time, but I'm very excited to see what kind of colors I can mix for this inspiration photo. Now we do have some primary colors here. I have some brilliant yellow, some Caribbean blue, a hint of true black, which is a primary, uh, but also in here we have moss green, forest green, uh, a little bit of Cabernet and cherry bomb, some frozen, the muck mixture that has all 40 jacquard acid dyes in it, pecan brown, oh, and some champagne. I've used this only once and the video probably has not come out yet. It'll be out at the end of June where I really play around with this dye for the first time. This is really a pastel, but who knows how much of it will actually use on the yarn, but it does take shift the off-white of bare yarn just a little bit. But anyway, we are at the dregs of a lot of these colors. And so while I probably could pick a palette of colors to start with that would involve a little bit less mixing, let's use the tools that I have so that way I can make more space for dye stocks in my home. But now let's fast forward through time and see what kind of colorways I ended up with. And here is all of the yarn that I dyed in the live stream. I dyed a total of five different colorways, three that were directly inspired by the reference photo. And then because there was a lot of extra colors that I mixed that weren't quite what I wanted, uh, we have two leave no dye behind colorways that I'll talk about towards the end. I started off by trying to mix a aqua kind of blue and a copper color that I had seen in our clocks. And I mixed them, things looked great on a paper towel, and then I think the colors just completely shifted by the time I poured it onto the yarn. So I went back to the drawing board and spent a lot of time trying to mix the more oxidized copper color. And I think in the end, I ended up using a lot of Caribbean blue with a tiny bit of some Cabernet to sort of deepen it and then some yellow to make it a little bit more green. But <laughs> it took me a while. And that's the main culprit of some of those leave no dye behinds that I'll be showing near the end. The copper color was a little bit easier to mix. I forget exactly what went into it, but I was able to get a pretty dirty orange, a beautiful copper. And the one downside I think to this entire project is that since I was mixing completely by feel and I wasn't measuring and tracking proportions at all, I won't be able to replicate these colors exactly. And even with the more um, like purplish colors that we eventually covered up that were in here, I really like how it turned out. And this feels like a penny almost kind of colorway. And I don't know, it just makes me really happy. Originally with this colorway, I had intended to leave some space to do some ivory with the champagne. But as I was adding more colors, the blues started to spread into this edge. And so I decided to lean into that. And so rather than lament that I wasn't gonna have as much ivory, we ended up with this like little bit of brighter blue and I adore it. It was a very happy accident. Now that I had these two colors that I really wanted mixed, I went out to create a colorway where they would be more subtle hints and less of the star. I started off by kettle dyeing the yarn. And the last yarn in this one is all nitpick stroll, 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon. I dyed it in some champagne first. And thankfully, a lot of that color soaked onto the yarn while everything was cold. And so then I was able to add some drops just sort of with an eyedropper of 
a brown that I mixed along, or was this brown? Just pecan brown. It may have been just pecan brown. I think the brown I mixed also just then turned purple or something weird. But I layered those three colors on a bit randomly and it'll give sort of a more random speckly type effect. These are large speckles, but if you're knitting socks, each of the colors should be maybe a couple of stitches and the backdrop will be primarily the champagne color. But what's pretty cool is you can see the tonal variation in that champagne color. And I think it's just really fun to see something like that when the color is already subtle to begin with. And then finally, for these main colorways, I had to do something on a zebra base. This is such a fun yarn from Wool to Die For, and this particular one is 100% Superwash Merino. But it's two ply, and one of the plies is variegated white and black, and so that already adds like a fun element to it that uh, can pool in spirals or micro stripes. It's a really, really fun element to the yarn already. And then when you add on other colors, then you have just more fun. <laughs> I feel like a lot of time when I dye yarn, I end up very, very concerned that there's gonna be pastel or white left behind. But given that our inspiration photo had so much neutral pastels in there, and yes, we had the depth with the shadows and things, but those lighter patches in here really, really work, and I'm just very excited with how it turned out. I had a lot of those greens left behind, and so I took two of the different colors and created a very soft, dip-dyed kind of colorway. Working cold, I dip-dyed 300 grams of Nomad's Marshmallow DK yarn into one of the grains, and then at the lightest end near the top, I poured on a Maybe it was more blue when I was trying for the green, the one that turned a little bit blue, over the other edge. And so where I poured on this color, there are, it's a little more variegated, it's a little more mottled versus the softness on the other side. But overall, we have this gorgeous, subtle, tonal yarn. And because the repeats are fairly large, this also could result in some micro striping or spiraling if you're working in the round, just depending on uh, how many stitches you have in your project. And then finally, with our last bit of remaining color, I decided to set up a cool vat that I would stick outside. Chat voted for me to pick something completely random to dye, and so I grabbed two skeins of Knit Picks Capretta Superwash. This yarn is 80% Superwash Merino, 10% Cashmere, 10% Nylon. And I added it into a plastic shoebox and poured some of the dye on top. I forgot to add vinegar at first, and so I added vinegar after I'd added the dye, but it didn't really matter because we still had uh, the colors sort of separate and strike. And then after about 10 minutes, we moved the yarn to give us this more subtle kind of grayish color and ooh, some hints of pink in there as well. Our Leave No Dye Behind skeins actually go with our sort of main inspired colorways really, really nicely. Uh, I think that it is so fun to see them all together. And yes, we do have four different yarn bases here, but you definitely can mix yarn bases together in different projects, even with different fiber contents and gauges, especially if it's something that you will hand wash versus machine washing. If you're making something you're gonna machine wash, then maybe you may not wanna mix things together without some kind of wash test, but these definitely could be combined together in some way. The one like fiber note I wanna add is that the Nomad Marshmallow DK is a little bit softer than say Wool of the Andes, uh, from Knit Picks, but it is not as soft as the uh, Zebra DK in the Merino in here or the Merino in the uh, Stroll Fingering Weight yarn. And so I just, I guess, want to point that out, but it is still a very nice sort of, feels like it would be a good workhorse kind of yarn. But now it's time for my favorite part of the Kevin's Dye Long Livestream Recap where we take a look at some of the yarn that you dyed inspired by the same inspiration photo. 
I really enjoy doing this because if you show one picture to a bunch of different people, you will end up with a bunch of different types of colorways, both in terms of technique and the actual colors that are used. If you would like to be featured in an upcoming Chemnitz Dialong recap, share your pictures on Instagram with the hashtag Chemnitz Dialong or reply with a photo comment to the inspiration photo on the Chemnitz Facebook page. I will always link to that image in the description of any of the live streams that I do. So thank you again to everyone who submitted photos. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and while I don't have a specific photo picked out for the June Chemnitz Dialogue, at the time I am filming this recap, I do know what the theme will be and the types of colors I'm gonna play with. So stay tuned and make sure you follow me on Instagram and subscribe here on YouTube, so that way you don't miss the fun live streams. If you love the yarn that I dyed in the May live stream, head over to the Cabinets Creations Etsy shop. I don't know if all of these colorways are still available in the shop, but my shop is filled with over a hundred different colorways that have been featured in all of my videos. And so it's worth going and checking that out. Thank you so much for watching.